Hey, what's up everybody, it's Pablo1713, hi and welcome in quick tip and trick series, episode number 18, how to get more money in Anno 1800. So it all starts when you set up your game. If you're gonna choose any of those three default options, you may find yourself in a big disadvantage. I'm talking about this in more in my quick tip and trick video number 8 and number 13, so you can check this if you want later on. And we'll go to the custom, because you always should go to the custom to set up your game. And there's a features option right here, which also can impact your income really much. If you will choose default advanced settings, you will start with medium income. And if you choose default expert settings, you will start yourself with low income. So you can set up it for expert settings to medium maximum, and on advanced settings, even on high. So check those videos if you want to see how you should set up this. And we'll go to the next option that will that can affect your income, which is inactive upkeep. This means that if, we'll, if this will be off, this will mean that if you will have any building that you want to pause production, it will stop generate any maintenance. But if you will set this on, this will mean that if you will even pause this building, it will still generate some extra maintenance cost. Bear this in mind because this will affect your income from maintenance. The third thing that you can set up is construction cost refunds. So if you will set up this on full, this will mean that if you build anything and then you want to destroy it, you will get full refunds so all the resources and all cash that you just spent it will be returned. But if you will set this on half, none or fee, this will mean that if you will destroy this, you will have to pay extra cash and all those resources that were spent, they will never go back to you. So you'll have to think twice before you will destroy anything. So those three things will affect your income and you can set them up in your before you will start your game. So make sure that you have advantage in those three options. So now let's jump to the game and see what will affect your income in a game. game. So so we are in my advanced guide gameplay playthrough and first thing that will affect your income is your citizens. So your citizens has some needs and if you will fulfill those needs, they will give you some extra money. And the most important things are in the happiness tab where they have some luxury items. So fulfilling this schnapps needs will give me plus 4 coins and giving them just one building which is pop will also give me plus 2 if they are in a close range. So if you will take this guy, which is in the closer range, as you can see, he will give me plus two. But but most important thing is that those luxury items are also needed by higher tier buildings. So if we're gonna go to the workers, we'll see that they also need schnapps. And farmers will give me just two coins, actually four coins, four coins from the schnapps distillery. But workers will give me seven, so almost double the amount that farmers are giving me. So let's check the other things. As we can see, pop will give me plus 3 and beer for the workers will give me plus 13 coins. And if we go to the higher tier building, which is Artistans, we'll see that beer will be even more than double because they will give me 38. And for ram, they will give me 19 and the engineers gonna give me from the ram 50. So there's a big gap from just 19 from the artistans to engineers and 50 from the ram. So it is very worthy to give them luxury items and luxury buildings. Like this variety theater will give me plus 10 coins. Because thanks to that you will have more money from your citizens. So always check the luxury needs and what need will give you. So this for example kind will need 20 and this fur coats will give me 60 coins, so you can see that you'll get big advantages if you'll give them those items. So fulfill their needs and they will give you plenty of money. As you can see, AIs, if you got good connections with your AIs, they will sometimes give you money, like this Bente, she just gave me 9k. So if you got good connection with other AIs, they will give you sometimes some, some cash. And also, of course, you can go and ask for some quests. And those quests also will give you some money. As we can see, this quest will give me 8k. And this is just delivery quest. So let's just 
deny this and check what about this another 9k so you can try to ask for the quest and get some extra money from the quests and also there are some quests in the in the game and there are marked in the minimap with the orange dot so as we can see there's some additional quest and sometimes those quests will also give you some money but usually they will give you just some items so like this additional item okay so, another thing that will affect your income is public mooring. And this is connected to your city attractiveness. And you are unlocking this public mooring when you will get to the artistant tab. So, in an artistance, we'll go to the medium harbor and you will see that there is a public mooring. So, I'm just gonna deny this option. Okay. And this is connected with your city attractiveness. So, the more attractiveness your city have, the more money those tourists will spend in your city. So as you can see, we got almost 1.6k from the tourists. And you can build public mooring on any of your island. So in here I got also public mooring and this one will generate 1.2k every time those tourists are getting to my city. And you can also put those public moorings on even empty islands. So as you can see, I got totally empty island in here I have just two buildings that are creating zinc and some coal and I got this public mooring and they also generate almost 1k so you can see that you can have some big advantage just placing some public moorings in even on empty islands and this will generate some extra income for you so the other thing that you can do is to use trade union buildings to lower down the maintenance costs because as you can see, my maintenance cost, I will just delete, okay. So as you can see, I got this trade union building right here, and it is, has the radius. And you will get this when you will get the workers. So we got trade union building right here. And right now, my income, as you can see, another mission. And thanks to this mission, we could have plus 16k. But right now, we'll let delete, because I don't need this. So right now my maintenance costs are 16,919. So once I will use one item that I have, which is this guy, as you can see it affects bakeries that are in range of this trade union building and it will reduce maintenance cost by 50%. So right now maintenance cost is 60, so it should go down to 30 per, per building. So if we're just gonna select this, we will see that, yeah, maintenance cost just lowers down to 30 and we also have lower maintenance cost to 16,799. So use trade union buildings with your items to decrease the maintenance cost of your buildings. And you can check what items do you have in your warehouse by clicking on any warehouse in your city, on your island, and you will go to the items tab and first you will have all items, but you can just filter this by uh, clicking on trade union items and then you will have all the trade union items that you have and you can just check which will affect what. So check what items you have and maybe you can lower down your maintenance costs in some areas. So other thing that you can do to make some extra cash is to set some automatic sale. So in your trade port in your city you got good tabs and you got some items. So all you have to do is to set the trade limit. So when you start, so maybe uh, let's just go to other item that I have, so maybe the sewing machines. So first you'll have this icon of balance. So if you will click once, you will get to purchase and another will change it to sale. And then you will just set up the limit with this arrow. So right now I have in my warehouse 73 pieces of sewing machines. So if I will go really down, I will set that I want to store 51 pieces. So anything that will go above this limit will be mark for sale and if there are going to be any AI ship that will come he will try to buy some items that are set for sale so you can check what items you just sell in this trade history which is right here this is icon so in your trade port trade history and you will see that i'm getting a lot of money from ais so sir Archibald by blake just left 624 he just bought 50 pieces of iron and 31 pieces of timber Madame Keina just bought some 6 pieces of bread and 42 pieces of sails 
and she gave me 1932 coins so this is a lot and you can check whole trade history that you have and you can see that those numbers are really big sometimes like this 1996 so set some limits for your items that you are storing in your warehouse because there's no point to have full warehouse you can set those items for sale and get some extra income from those items so other thing that you can do is to use your trade roads to sell some goods from your city so right now i got this trade road another trade which is called and i am selling those i am selling wool and pigs to my ai players so on each map you have four ai passive players but only with three you will be able to trade with so if we go to the ports we will see that they have some needs with those items ah, yes. so sir archibald, sir archibald blake requests coal and he'll pay 16 cash for each one ton of this item and he also accepts other things so we can sell anything to him that we have and if we go to benta which is in here we will see that she requests watches and she will give us 8320 cash if we will deliver this. Uh, but this always changes because right now we will see that she only needs 6 watches. So when you're gonna sell 6 watches to her then this need will disappear and there's gonna be some new need. So you can set up this just to make it automatically like, like here. So to make sure that you're always checking this one AI, non-passive AI and try to sell him something or you can go and visit passive AIs like Madame Kaina and check what she wants so Madame Kaina wants first and she will give me 496 for each for a coat and if we go to Ellie we will see that he wants soap and potatoes so we can sell soap and potatoes for some nice numbers and some other stuff as well cool. so you can use your ships to trade those items and get some extra income and as we we're gonna see that this ship gonna give me 192 cash income and this trade road is set up so i can get money from this trade road as we can see 192 from this trade road each ship has his maintenance cost so you must make it in mind that this will cost you 15 cash every one minute so this means that if this trade road will be too long, you will not get any money back. So if we're gonna go to the breakdown of your balance, you will see that the higher tier of the citizens, the more money they will give. So as we can see, farmers will generate not very much money. The difference between farmers and workers are really big and then from workers to artisans is just 1k and from artisans to engineers is almost 2k. So always make sure that you will upgrade your citizens because the higher tier of the buildings the more money they will generate. So don't stay long in the farmer's face, make sure to jump to the worker's face because thanks to that you will increase your income really much. So make sure to upgrade your citizens to higher level because then you will have much bigger income from them. So right now that's it, boys and girls. I hope that this will help you in your own playthrough and you will not have to suffer anymore with those money problems. So boys and girls, thanks a lot for watching. I hope that you had some useful stuff from you and I hope that we're gonna meet each other next time. So boys and girls, have a wonderful day and if you're watching this at night, then good night. See you next time. Your people are healthy again.